Hi, I'm Dr. Victoria Stamen, urologist at Chesapeake Urology Associates, here to talk to you about Botox for the treatment of overactive bladder and what you need to know prior to your minimally invasive procedure. What is overactive bladder? Overactive bladder is urgent to urinate with or without leakage, usually with daytime and nighttime frequency. Overactive bladder can be caused by neurologic conditions like multiple sclerosis or spinal cord injuries, but it is also commonly seen in many patients without a known cause. How do people usually cope with overactive bladder? Conservative therapy with fluid restrictions and dietary changes is common. Pad usage, knowing where all the bathrooms are, staying home to be close to the bathroom and not doing activities you enjoy. So how do we treat overactive bladder? Medical therapy is the first step. If medical therapy fails, Botox may be one option offered by your doctor. What are the indications for Botox? Patients with overactive bladder symptoms that may not have responded to conservative and medical therapy. Patients with overactive bladder symptoms that cannot tolerate medical therapy. How does Botox work? Botox calms the nerves in the bladder that cause the muscles of the bladder to be overactive. Since its approval in 2013, it has been used in over 60,000 people with overactive bladder. Botox usually lasts about six months. Since it is temporary, the procedure does need to be repeated. What can you expect after receiving Botox? There is often a decrease in frequency of urination and also leakage episodes, usually 50% or more. Effects of Botox are usually seen by two weeks after injection. Effects commonly last up to six months. What are the risks of Botox? Urinary tract infection is the most common risk. Temporary burning or painful urination is noted in less than 10% of the patients. Urinary retention, or the inability to empty the bladder completely, requiring temporary catheterization or self-catheterization is noted in about 6% of the patients. Who should not receive Botox? Botox should not be used in patients with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, Lambert-Eaton syndrome, or myasthenia gravis, as it may cause difficulty with breathing or swallowing. How will your procedure be performed? Your procedure is estimated to take about 45 minutes, including anesthesia time. Your doctor will determine the type of anesthesia you will have. Lidocaine will be placed in the bladder for 20 minutes to allow the bladder to be anesthetized. Once the anesthesia takes effect, your doctor will place a small lighted instrument called a cystoscope into your bladder through the urethra. The bladder will then be filled with sterile water and then very small injections of Botox will be placed into the bladder wall. This injection process should take about five to 10 minutes. What is the follow-up after the procedure? You will have a post-procedure appointment about two weeks later to check the improvement of your bladder symptoms and to make sure you are emptying well. So how do we prepare for the procedure? Prior to having Botox procedure, your doctor will get a urine culture to make sure there is no urine infection present. Your doctor will also give you antibiotics to take around the time of the procedure to help prevent infection. Your doctor will decide on the dose of Botox you will receive. If you receive Botox for any other reason, please tell your doctor as there is a maximum dose allowable in a three month period. Because the procedure may be done under anesthesia, you may need to fast starting the night before the procedure. Certain medications such as blood thinners may need to be held several days before the procedure. A preoperative exam, including blood work and an electrocardiogram is usually required and will need to be done by your primary care physician. You will need a ride home from the procedure and a responsible adult available for the first night after the procedure. Your doctor will tell you if you require anesthesia or whether this can be done under local. Where is the procedure performed? The procedure may be performed in the Chesapeake Urology Summit Ambulatory Surgery Center or in the Chesapeake Urology office. These are usually adjacent to your urologist's office or in close proximity. These centers specifically are for outpatient procedures. Some patients may need their procedure performed in a hospital, usually due to medical conditions. Recovery after the procedure. 
Before your discharge, you may be given a prescription for antibiotics and or a pain reliever. You may experience some burning with urination and some blood in the urine. This may last a few days. You may resume your normal activity 24 hours after the procedure. Things you need to let your doctor know about. Inability or difficulty urinating, fever greater than 101.5, continued blood in the urine, prolonged discomfort in the bladder, nausea, vomiting, or severe pain. Pre-authorization for the procedure is essential. We will communicate with your insurance company to determine your coverage and any co-payments or deductibles that you may owe. We will provide you with an estimate of any charges that you may incur. All charges are due prior to the procedure. Payment plans can be arranged as well. So how do you get scheduled for the procedure? A scheduler will call you and give you a date. You may need medical clearance with your primary care physician or internist, including a history and physical exam. Additional testing may include blood work, EKG, and chest x-ray. You will receive a letter with all this information and where and when to report. Is there any other special preparation for the surgery? If receiving anesthesia, you should not eat or drink after midnight. Our nurse will call and discuss medications to take in the morning prior to the surgery. If taking a blood thinner, please let your surgeon know as special precautions may be needed. Never stop these medications without a discussion with your primary care physician. These include aspirin or Plavix, Coumadin, Xarelto, Eliquis, or Pradaxa. Arrive early, usually at least one hour prior to the scheduled surgery. If you are receiving anesthesia, make sure that you have a ride home. That person must come and stay the entire time of the procedure. At Chesapeake Urology, we hope that your procedure goes well and that you have a speedy recovery. We appreciate your feedback regarding your procedure as we are always trying to improve the care that we provide to our patients. Should you have any questions regarding your procedure or recovery, please contact the Chesapeake Urology Physician's Office at 877-422-8237.